Today is November 10th, not the 9th, technically the 10th. It's like 12.05 in the morning. So technically, I mean, it feels like Thursday to me. So this still feels like a daily upload in my books. Uh, and based on your time zone, it's still technically a daily upload. So uh, I'm winning, kind of. Uh, but anyways, in today's video, as you may have guessed based off the title of the video, we are going to be going over all of the different lines and variations that you can play based off the headliners that you may find within the punk vertical you might have also noticed by the way if you're a regular viewer here that something is different uh as you might have guessed i got new earrings no i got my fucking hair done um which is really crazy for me because i don't ever really do this kind of thing i never dyed my hair before especially i've, I've had like the bangs before once but i've never done like the whole thing before so this was uh this was an experience for your boy um if you didn't if you noticed the past couple videos my hair was looking greasy as fuck and it turns out by the way if you are ever gonna bleach your hair to any degree you should not wash your hair for like three to four days because just the natural oils that secrete from your head uh protect your follicles and your scalp as well as just your hair in general when you're starting to damage it with bleach or whatever so fun fact for you today you learned something new i mean you're about to learn a lot in case you're you haven't been playing pve at all but nonetheless let's get on to the today's video so let me know what you think about the do, by the way. I, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of liking it. I, I liked it a lot more than I was expecting. But anyways, sorry. Moving on. Inside of the Punk Vertical, we have four main units. We have Pantheon, Vi, Jinx, and Twitch. If you are unfamiliar, we will quickly go over each of these. Pantheon is a Punk Guardian. Vi is a Punk Mosher. Jinx is a Punk Rapid Fire. And Twitch is a Punk Executioner. The main damage dealers of this composition are usually either Jinx or Twitch. It's never usually both. The reason why is because they're both AD units and their traits don't overlap in any degree except for Punk. So you don't really find yourself playing double AD carries. It makes not a lot of sense. It's very rare you find yourself in an instance where you're you know stacking a bunch of ad items and like literally nothing else uh, on top of that the main tank tends to usually be pantheon the reason is is just because pantheon's traits are just better suited for tanking guardian is just a very terrific trait for a lot of shielding to try and you know keep the front line sustained vi on the other hand is a mosher you can think of mosher as, it's a brand new trait to tft by the way so if you don't understand what it is i understand but Mosher basically is a bruiser trait. It's sort of as you're losing HP, you start to gain extra Omni Vamp and extra attack speed. So not the best for tanking. We definitely want to be sticking with Pantheon. Um, I will say this, by the way, with Punk. Headliners, as you know, gives you plus two in a specific trait. So for example, Jinx can get plus two within Punk or plus two within Rapid Fire. And this is very important. For Punk in particular, at least from what I've found, you don't really want to ever take Punk if it's plus two Punk. The only exception to this rule is Twitch and Pantheon. If you find a Punk to Pan or sorry, a Punk headliner Pantheon within the early game, and I'm talking like early stage two, because the idea is is that Pantheon two you can justify it because it's such a strong early game tempo unit that you could play it and then maybe pivot off of it or maybe just play it for just a lot of HP preservation. Because normally when you're playing Punk, you actually lose streaking most of the time because you don't have a lot of the units, you don't have a lot of that power just yet because the trait relies on you rolling your shop to try and boost up your base stats. So that's why um, unless you find the Pantheon again, we'll talk more into the theory as to why that's actually the case, like why plus two isn't that good. But for now keep it in the back of your mind and let's move on to the first headliner so the first headliner we'll talk about today is jinx jinx with plus two for rapid fire um this is your board that you're typically rolling for on level five typically you are just slow rolling on five looking for that jinx three that vi three and you can sometimes even consider the Tarek three here i've heard mixed reviews about this um i'm not the biggest fan of the idea of playing Tarek 3 here the idea is is that basically um pantheon 3 is a little awkward to be rolling for on 5 as well and it's not even guaranteed because the odds are just so much different right compared to rolling a level 6 so you kind of can consider going for Tarek 3 instead as your main tank and then this is just a pantheon 2 and then this gives you the option to just completely drop out of punk later on or rather just play 2 punk and then just flex into whatever but nonetheless this is an option but i I mean, test it, test it. Let me know what you think, because I've personally not had the chance to test Tarek 3 yet. I've heard about it. I, I don't know how it is. Um, his spell doesn't necessarily seem to be the best for tanking. He gets a shield, which is nice, but then his next two autos deal bonus magic damage, which seem very, like, not that great, in my opinion. So, I mean, again, I, it could be very sleeper OP. Who knows? Maybe his stats are too high, so I don't know. Let, let, let me know. Check it out. But... Moving on, basically with drinks, you want to be playing into this ideal board for Punk with the four Rapid Fire. As you can see here, I actually omitted the Tarek here in general. Um, usually, I don't, again, I don't really know about the Tarek deck, but four, four, two Guardian, sorry, with the Pantheon 3 in the front line and four Rapid Fire. A very simple board to be playing. And you're basically like, 
once you hit this state, you're like, okay, sometimes you have the Pantheon 3, sometimes you're not even close. Don't roll on 6 for it. If you are close to it, then sure, consider it. But if you're not, be prudent, right? Just stick to Pantheon 2, maybe drop out of the punks, and then start just playing upwards towards just whatever you find, right? So for example, like a standard board for or a standard transition, for example, let's say you are rolling on 5, you hit the Jinx 3, you hit the Vi 3, and you're sitting on like 4 Pantheons. That's not enough to justify you know, rolling on six for just Pantheons and technically nothing else. I mean, you can make the argument for Twitch, but again, Jinx and Twitch together to dual carry together doesn't really make a lot of sense just because they're both AD. So what ends up happening is that usually you find a better Guardian, something like the Thresh. This can be your main tank instead. You can just start checking out of these uh, rapid fires into just higher quality ones. So for example, stuff like Caitlyn, stuff like the Lucian, very, very strong. You can cap out with Lucian actually, which is super, super nice. It is AD, but I mean, it's a Lucian, which is a little different. Uh, you can also, you know, start looking into other ways to capping out your board instead of the Pantheon and the Twitch. You can actually play stuff like, sorry, that's not... Uh, Yorick, this is Yorick. Yorick as well for the Moshers and the Guardian. You can even consider dropping the Vi because it has no items, but I mean, ideally you want to keep at least two Punk. Uh, stuff like Jazz as well, which is super, super nice. You can do the Bard, uh, Ziggs combo, which is just getting that Dazzler in there along with the uh, Jazz combo, which is super, super nice playing along more horizontally. The front line is looking a little bit weak here. Maybe we find an Alawi, just tech it in here with the little tentacles. And this is just looking already a lot better, a lot stronger, and potentially really, really a cool way to like cap out our board. Again, set 10, very flexible. You want to be playing around whatever you find. This is just an example of ways that you can be capping out. Keep in mind, by the way, even though, yes, you do spend money on the punk trait, doesn't mean you have to stay married to it. At a certain point, if you're thinking like, hey, this Jinx is just not doing enough, fucking sell it. Just sell the Jinx, sell the Vi, and then just cap out with something like a Jin 2. Maybe a chosen Jin 2 that you find with like the headliner for like Big Shot, for example. Super cool stuff. Just transfer the items over onto him. He can utilize most AD items just fine. He does highly prefer blue buff, but it's not 100% necessary. It is good gigabits but it's not like 100% necessary but that's basically it for jinx moving on to vi now vi i'm going to be completely honest as you can see on the current board uh she's just not here um i have tried multiple ways of trying to make this vi carry unit work and to be completely honest with you i just think it's dog shit i don't think there is a world where you can ever justify playing vi carry or vi 3 as like a as like a unit you want to be itemizing. Maybe if they buffer in the future, that might be the case. But even within like vertical moshers, which by the way, why do we not have nine mosher or eight mosher? Like we have a lot of mosher units, but six is the maximum that we can go. That doesn't seem, that doesn't seem right. Um, so, I mean, even within vertical moshers, you end up playing like Urgot reroll for the most part. And then you just play around six mosher, three pentakill with like the Karthus in the back line. This is like the main line, at least for what I can tell. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I have not found a way to make Vi 3 work in a way where she is the main focus of the composition. So if you have anybody you know who is like high elo and can justify like a Vi 3 build, please let me know in the comments. I am dying to know because nobody, at least to my knowledge or anybody within my circles has figured it out. Uh, moving on though, going on to Twitch. Uh, Twitch is sort of uh interesting twitch has two main lines actually which is i think is really cool um one main line is based on whether or not you find a very early karthus uh basically the idea is, is that early karthus is actually just really really strong and the idea is is that you can just dual carry twitch three with the karthus basically you're rolling on six hitting the pantheon three twitch three and then if you find like a karthus with five percent odds you just play karthus with the dual carry and then you just flex with pentakill with your front line sentinel is ideal because you get the mordekaiser as well as the blitzcrank in here and guardian is really great with the yorick obviously there's a lot of stuff going on here a lot of are really difficult units to find the poppies the yorix right but still nonetheless a very very cool and strong board to be playing around the basis and the core of this comp though again is just twitch with karthus dual carrying and some level of a front line again ideally it's pantheon those free refreshes from punk are gonna really not free sorry they're one gold but those refreshes are gonna help you a lot in trying to find your units you're gonna have a good time trying to play this comp now oh my god hold dude hold on to your fucking socks homie like Okay, I love this board. This board I had theory crafted about four hours ago. I tried it and it was very strong and I'm very happy and proud of myself. This is Twitch Country Reroll. And I thought I was a genius for figuring this out. Um, I don't know the best way to play the early game. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. But from what I can tell, level six is basically something along this line here, which is three country for executioner. You want, again, the headliner is two plus for the executioner. That's all that we've been talking about. But 
Two plus for the execution for Twitch. You play four execution here and you play country with the Hecarim in the back line. You reroll on six, trying to find that Twitch three, trying to find that Pantheon three. And then once you find those, you can just cap out actually at level seven. At level seven, you, you actually just don't really have much of an issue going level eight. Um, you just stayed seven and it's fine. The part of the reason is because your traits work out so beautifully on the left hand side here. But another reason is because the Hecarim, the country uh, summon, scales with star level. And it sort of gives you this reason to just play at level 7 and with punk reroll, you gotta just keep utilizing the punk, you have a reason to keep rolling on 7. And you just find Urgot 3, Samira 3, Vex 3, uh, and you just get to itemize these in whichever way you can. Any AP items, they go onto Vex here, which is super dope. She's actually a very, very fun carry to be playing around. Stuff like blue buff is really nice. Stuff like Archangel, stuff like Gunblade, you get the idea. Very just generic AP items. Samira, she is an Executioner. Keep that in mind. You don't want to be building IE on the Twitch at all or the Samira. Executioner, we already get crit from her spells. It's very redundant. Stuff like Death Blade, stuff like GS, right? Stuff like this, very, very strong. Urgot as well, stuff like GA, stuff like Sterak, stuff like... IE or yeah, IE on Urgot because he's not an executioner. Stuff like Titans, right? Stuff like this, super super nice as well. Really really fun board to play, and um, it's just so cool. It's just a very cool board where like everything is just golden, and then it's just it's golden, and they're all three cost units, and you're like wow. Again, I highly recommend trying this board out. I think it's really, really cool. At level 7, obviously, you just tech in the poppy for Moshers and Punk. Uh, once you hit the Pantheon and the Twitch, you just go 7 and just tech in the poppy. I don't know if I mentioned that yet, but just in case. Uh, Thresh is also a secondary tank in case you need it. And poppies also can be a secondary carry if you need it, depending on the items. Obviously, I would prefer to itemize the Urgot just because they're both Moshers, but this is going to be stronger in the end game. But maybe you find like negative Urgots or you're contested. Then you can just itemize the poppy with the Urgot items, and this is totally fine and acceptable as well. Poppy, don't sleep on her. She can actually deal and dish a decent amount of damage very very cool board to play please try it out let me know what you think i don't think it's a board that you can hard force very easily but i think it's a board that you can definitely try and experiment with and if you have the line for it definitely try playing it because i think it's super duper fun uh finally the last board i want to quickly just glaze over is the max capped version of punks um this is sort of a really weird sort of scenario where i didn't know why this works in the way that it does um basically i found this while like just testing different variations and different lines but for whatever reason this board is perfect on seven it's just perfect on seven with like alawi yorick olaf twitch pantheon and karthus um now you might be looking at this board like this is garbage right level five costs on seven um you know like what the fuck is going on like when are you ever playing one cost and five costs on your board there is one exception to why this board could ever be played um actually hold that thought real quick by the way uh first off this is supposed to be a level eight board no chance in hell you're finding alawi and yorick on seven just tech in whoever does not matter just somebody to tech in um not allow you where you got that maybe like a different five cost like a dazzler or whatever like just or sorry hyper pop whatever it is just tech something in here on level eight and the only reason this board could ever work is because there's a specific augment in the game that allows you to it, it basically tries to incentivize you to play both one costs and two costs and both four costs and five costs and i think like whenever there's a pair of them uh you get you deal bonus damage or whatever uh someone in the comments can please tell me the name of the augment because i don't remember what it is off the top of my head but i've seen it multiple times and every time i've seen that augment i've been like that is the shittiest augment i've ever heard in my life but this board is like the only justification for that augment at least to my knowledge so if you end up playing twitch and pantheon and you're like wait that's an early allow you maybe i can play this line and i hit that specific augment which again i don't remember the name of and nobody has the fucking augment list anywhere so uh yeah if you find it please let me know again all these sites they all have all the augments but these are all from set 9 they're not set 10 so yeah i don't know but anyways that's basically it for this video it's a very short one again there's not that many units to talk about so i hope you guys learned something take care guys and happy climbing